click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now looking at the design numerical of Screwjack, first numerical. In the last section, we have designed few parameters of screw. In today's session, we are going to see whether those parameters are safe or not. So let us move ahead. We already have a standard selection with us for that particular screw that like uh, outer diameter, core diameter, the mean diameter, the pitch, etc, etc. So let us move ahead. So the first thing that we are going to do, do is check for combined stresses. For this we need to know what is the actual torque acting on this particular screw and that's why there are two aspects of torque, torque 1 and torque 2 which are acting and again you will find those empirical formula in the section of screw jack. So it says that total torque T is equal to T1 plus T2 where T1 is equal to the formula says that it's load into tan of alpha plus phi where alpha is helix angle and phi is its angle of friction into mean diameter by 2. Now here what we know is the value of alpha is 2.1 and the value of beta sorry value of phi is equal to 7 degree it's a standard selection and so we can use those values directly and therefore as we substitute these values we'll get t1 value equal to 2082.2 kilo newton millimeter i'm avoiding the steps i'm directly substituting the values and getting this answer this is something called as talk 2 which will be given by half mu into n r1 plus r2 so now this talk to is important for us and how um, how this particular expression comes I'm, I'm going to elaborate it now we are doing this talk a talk is going to act on this particular screw now there are two aspects this screw has to move across this particular nut so there's another thing that this particular thing is nothing but the collar provided to the nut whereas this is the only part of nut associated so when it has to come out it has to come out of not only this nut it has to come out of this collar also there are so that's why there is an additional torque that will be offered by this collar part to the screw and that's why you have to consider the second part so first part is offered by this particular screw uh, nut sorry and second part will be the offered by the collar of nut and that's why T1 is referred to this and T2 is referred to this and that's why this empirical relation comes into picture. So after substituting this available values we will get the answer T2 is equal to 3.9 into 10 raised to 6 Newton millimeter. So that is how the things come into picture. This is another aspect also of this particular screw jack. The T2, like I said, refers to the cup. I'm sorry. T1 is something that is associated with the whole nut. We are least bothered about the collar. Uh, let me correct myself. 
but the T2 value which is the second talk is associated with the cup because the the cup overall thing it has to overcome because it is going to sustain the weight already so it's an initial inertia that the this particular screw has to come out of and then it has to sustain that particular load and that's why torque one through the nut torque two through the cup that's why when i consider the cup thing there comes this two things let me consider only half section quarter section of that sorry half section of cut where this cup where this is the actual load acting thing this particular thing and this particular thing is your radius one and radius two again from the standard selection of this cup again from the section of PSG uh, with respect to screw jack we can find out R1 R2 and based on that only we have found out this particular answer and therefore combined torque which is T1 plus T2 comes out to be when I add it it makes it 5.9822 mega newton millimeter or you can say 10 raised to 6 newton millimeter so that is what the total value of torque that is going to act on this particular screw now let us find out the stresses We know that this is standard formula again for the compressive stress. So once we use that particular formula, the answer we are going to get is 32.37 Newton millimeter square. I am not repeating the formula thing. You can of course refer to the previous to previous lecture where we have given different formula for sigma c. Putting those values will get this answer. Also, the value of tau. Again, using that formula of shear, we'll get is 33.14 Newton per millimeter square. Now, using these two values, we have to find out the combined stress, which is nothing but your principal stress. And therefore, principal stress let's consider the maximum value, of course, sigma 1. Of course, we again know the formula in terms of sigma c and tau. Let us avoid writing them. The value we can find out is 52.934 Newton per millimeter square. Also, tau maximum using again the formula or empirical relation can be found out using this formula and the value will get the value for tau max we get is somewhere around 36.34 newton per millimeter square so that is how the values of stresses which are going to induce in the body we have obtained let us cross verify them with the allowable values or otherwise we can select the material based on this so final material selection if you remember people we have not selected any specific materials we have uh, mentioned that we can use for screw as kind of steel and we have mentioned for the uh, nut we can use a kind of cast time but we have not specifically selected now there are two ways you can select the material you can use its properties and you can prove that those properties are safe for this or otherwise based on this you can select the property such that they will be safe so let us say FOS is equal to 4 in our case FOS is 4 in our case. We have selected uh, the materials put superficially uh, for screw 
and that is going to be a kind of steel let us select the final steel with the proper name based on the factor of safety now again from PSG it's uh, 7.87 we can uh, refer to different uh, factor of safeties so you can take it 3 to 5 so I have selected 4 as the factor of safety so keeping this thing in mind we know this that the uh, let us talk in terms of stress any stress which is allowable is given by stress which is maximum or in case of ductile material it's the yield stress divided by FOS we don't have this value as of now because we don't have selected the material but this is what the value we have this is the allowable value which is the maximum value we can allow we know that these are the maximum values that can be allowed in our case so in case of principal stress we can use this relation and in case of shear stress we can say tau max should be equal to tau divided by FOS shear stress as we know that for ductile materials shear stress is exactly half the allowable value if this particular thing is safe no doubt that tau also will be safe in our case and let us do it for only the this particular stress so using this relation we already have this value 52.934 let us take it 53 for that matter therefore 53 is equal to sigma yield divided by FOS we have selected is 4 and therefore sigma yield should be somewhere around 213 Newton per millimeter square we have already uh, figured out this value as the larger value so something sigma y which is somewhere around 210 Newton per millimeter square will be the safe material for us so therefore from PSG one point nine of course we can refer to different series of materials you can find out a material which has sigma yield is equal to somewhere around 210 Newton per millimeter square and therefore it comes out to be C20 C20 is the material which has the yield strength somewhere around this can be selected as the required material there we conclude with the safety of this particular screw the last thing which is left over is about the nut and the uh, screw bending also so of course we are looking uh, going going to look at the bending of the screw in the next section but for in this section we are going to look at the um, induced shear stress in that so shear stress in nut we know that according to the uh, nomenclature of nut the shear stress thing can be written in terms of the axial load divided by this particular formula after substituting these values we will get tau is somewhere equal to 6.698 newton per millimeter square 
so this is the induced value of shear stress in nut but we know that for nut if we select some um, brittle material um, let us say some cast iron its a uh, shear value is definitely greater than this and therefore we can say that tau is smaller than tau allowable for nut material and therefore nut and screw are safe in shear and combined stresses so there we conclude with this particular design aspect of nut and screw in the next lecture we will be dealing with buckling of the screw and will design it for it and some of the rest of the parameters also will be going to look at thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ekeda thank you